Hello and welcome to Board Game Co. Today we are doing, I think at this point, a continued series of gameplay on my channel, review on your channel. I, well, first of all, yes. Secondly, is I like how whenever we sit down to do a video for my channel, you don't give me even the moment to get no, settled. Not a you second. want to jump straight into not it just so you can take second. the lead. Well, I, I like taking the lead, except if it's on yeah. my channel and then I wait for you to casually say, hello, hello, welcome to yeah. his channel. Yeah, it's okay. Anyways. We are doing a review of, I already put the box cover down, Valor and Villainy. Ludwig's Labyrinth. I was going to say, Ludwig's say Labyrinth. Mordok's Minions of Mordak. Minions of Mordak. Yeah, that's basically it. This is going to be, for those who don't know, this is going to be a standalone game in the Valor and Villainy universe, but taking, like, this is drastically shifting things up. This is not like Pandemic Legacy 1 and no. Pandemic Legacy 2. This is not, you know, uh, Kingdom Rush and Kingdom Rush 2. This is Valor and Villainy, but it's now... It, well, it's cooperative. It's, it's cooperative, cooperative and it's legacy light mode with some choose your own adventure, some narrative, some legacy light, some like upgrades and 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 character progression. Instead of one villain, there's like fifteen. There's a ton. I this, don't know how many. This there are, is but taking something. this is taking the base mechanics that was so much fun in Valor and Villainy. Yes. When it came to dice rolling, upgrading spells, yep. ability card slots, weird wacky storytelling, and a sort of adventure game that felt like it had more depth to it than it was originally given. Yes. And it is just, as far as I can tell, expanding. Yeah, everywhere. Basically. Now, a full disclaimer here. So basically, short version of this is I've only played this once. I want to be very clear with that. I've played this once. I've played the intro scenario. Uh, that said, I have played the original Valor and Villainy have. quite a bit, and I am comparing the two. So it's not, it, it, it's a half review, half first impressions. I know enough about the sequence and the system to know what I like and don't like. I'm going to be commenting on the changes and what I've seen differently and my thoughts on those, but want to be clear with that. I have played this three times. Uh, I have played intro scenarios. Yeah. And a little bit more in-depth scenario. Yep. Second caveat: there is an official Quackalo scenario mm. in this game because Valor and Villainy was the very first game I ever covered for Kickstarter on my channel, yes. and so this one, the follow-up, it kind of has a special special spot for me. And the fact that they listened to that and included a special custom Quackalo like showdown little hunt. I don't know why they needed to. Sir Thaddy Croaks encompasses you perfectly. It's true. It's true. It's true. I'm very much a Sir Thaddy Croaks. Either way, that's the second caveat. The third caveat is going to be the fact that I'm doing work with oh, Skybound yeah. Games. Uh, the gameplay is some previews, uh, some stuff like that. And so, like always, uh, I'm doing some produced content for them. Uh, alongside a review that is going up on your channel. Yeah. Your review is not associated with that at all. Not in the slightest. Yep. Uh, second, ca not caveat, second note is my review is going to be, I have a review of the original Valor and Villainy on my channel. You can check that out if you want, but the I want to cover a specific few high notes because they're okay. going to be relevant for comparing and contrasting. First of all, I gave it a four to five. I, it was a game that I really liked, but also had enough critiques okay. and criticisms that I couldn't get that five spot. Uh, those critiques and criticisms were primarily going to come down to the fact that the, the game ran longer than I I would have liked mm -hmm. for the game genre it was. It's a lot of fun. It's powers, it's abilities, it's card play. It's, it's like that, that, that the one versus many thing where you have people cooperating against somebody else who feels too mm -hmm. powerful the entire game, but actually ends up being fairly well balanced, all things considered. But ultimately, it's a game that ends up being a good half an hour to 45 minutes longer than I want it to be for the gameplay experience it gives me. So I like it. It doesn't hit the table as much as I'd like because of that game length sure. balance. Uh, that's relevant here because we're going to be talking about doing the comparison. So let's go through this. Should we highlight what's different about the games? Uh, sure. I mean, we've, we've highlighted the fact that it is uh, cooperative instead of one versus many. Yes. Uh, we should highlight the fact that it is a campaign where you're going to be getting new cards, upgrading, the story is going to be progressing, yep. but it doesn't have any destructible elements. Instead, everything can be reset back to zero if you want to replay it. Yep. Think there next are, and minions, that kind of I thing. I believe all the characters are going to be backwards or compatible to some yes. degree. Yes. And so characters from the other game can come into this one and play. I think even negative like villains from this game can go backwards you to sure play. That? I'm not 100% sure. sure. Okay. I actually don't think that's possible now that I'm okay. thinking now through think it more. Right. Okay. It might be possible, though. Maybe. I believe it should. it's supposed to mix and match as much as feasibly possible, though. Yes. I, I'm aware of that. I this also... one's going to be much more of a labyrinth going on, hence the name Ludwig's Labyrinth. It's less of a just adventure across the whole board. I mean, yep. the other game doesn't have any blockers. You have mountains no. that can occasionally limit your movement a bit, but you can basically go anywhere. This, this... one's going to snake and spiral into each yep. other. Along with that, you're going to have a whole new arsenal of yes. weapons, gear, spell cards, and more specifically, 
are fighting and arrow cards. These are going to be like spell cards, special bonuses and abilities. In the last game, if you weren't a mage, if you weren't focusing on you your really, spells... You didn't get a lot of cards. And the, the cards are the most fun. They are. The most fun part of the game is those spells. Not that the rest of the game isn't fun too, but drawing some crazy spells that can help or hurt you or do different things, it's a lot of fun. And, and the ability to now have that in the game without forcing you to yep. go into, into spells is a nice uh, little compliment. Yeah, the only other stuff that I'd, I'd maybe point out, and you might have some things that, that you'd indicate, is going to be the fact that there can be a standalone scenario and then there's a campaign book I believe it has yeah I, I think I, I don't want to quote how many chapters it is but I think it's I think it's a shorter campaign like 8 to 12 total scenarios that okay. you're playing through to get to the end to get to the end game and throughout that entire process you're unlocking new characters new creatures new villains and, and sort of expanding the arsenal of what you have to play with in that standalone one shot okay cool which brings us to the uh, what we liked, didn't like, and can see others not liking. Now, you for start myself, on this one, yeah. For myself, it's going to be very much framed around the original game and the improvements or things that I see as potentially worse from that original game. And I'm going to start with what I liked because there's a decent amount here. Starting with, and most importantly, that playtime. This this sure. was, and again, one play, take it with a heavy great do dose of salt, all that. Grain of salt, dose of salt, I don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. I believe it's a scoop of butter. A scoop butter. of butter. Take it with a heavy scoop of butter. This game was much, much shorter than any game of Valor and Villainy I have ever played, but also... Even with a teaching time. But also, not too short. It was the game that, when we covered the fact that it's four rounds, and I was already looking and thinking like, hey, I want it shorter. This feels like it's going to be way too short, way too constricted. I would argue that this intro scenario was the perfect length. Yeah. It did not feel too short. It did not feel too long. It gave me the experience I want. It gave me the fun I want, the high notes I want, the exploration, the teamwork, all yeah. of those things. And then it said, boom, a little bit over an hour and you're done. You're over. I don't remember exactly how long it was. I, I, think, it, I think it ended right on the perfect note. Now, yeah. I can say the one, the, the scenario that I played on TTS, yeah. which was one of the Quackalope scenarios, that ran right at two hours streaming. But TTS. Again, yeah. TTS. Uh, and I would say we explored, it was a full, I believe, five player game at two hours on yeah. TTS, and we explored five every, players, and we explored every element yeah. of the map. For context here, five players on TTS, my experience with Valen Villainy has been that even a three player game yeah. in person, not TTS, TTS always adds time, a three player game in person usually ends up being two plus hours, often yep. two and a half. So that's even that. Still in a really good. Still comfortable. And that. then the other intro scenario, just like this one, very concise, very clean. I think it was 30 to 40, and then this one was right about 45 to 60. Yeah. Uh, and so I assume as you go farther in it, it may get a little bit longer, but at that point you're invested and you get rewarded for the added length. Cool. So I like that. Uh, past that, next thing I like is going to be the the, the cards, these decks we talked about. The fact yeah. that we have decks that are, there's more customization. The original Val Villainy had, I believe, two spell decks. This, uh, this is, one's going to have a this bunch. This is a prototype. Yeah. And they're they're sending us with this. These are weapons, decks, spells, new upgraded gear. We're finding it throughout the course of the gameplay. And seemingly, from what I've seen so far, a lot more variety already. And I could be wrong, variety. but it seems like there's a lot more differences going on. They really doubled down on the fun part. They had of, permission to play. Yeah, they had permission basically. to play, and they've done it. Yeah, so, so the more spells, more all that, that's just a straight up plus. It's more variety, more smells, more things that I like in the Valor and Villainy system. Uh, past that, I really like the Labyrinth. I really, really like the Labyrinth. It actually feels yeah. more... And, and the, the board wraps around. Something we need to talk about. Okay. The board wraps around, which I thought would feel a little fiddly-ish, but it gives you a lot of room for it to feel like you're in this mystical, magical trap labyrinth. and, and la labyrinth? 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 Labyrinth. Labyrinth. That's the one. And it really gives you a restriction to the board. You could get occasionally stuck, caught in some areas, but I'd like the, the map that develops a lot more. Here. And instead of digging a tunnel that goes out far in one direction, this allows it to stay encompassed in a board-sized space. Yeah. Which I think is a good yeah. decision. No, it works well. Yeah. It works well. Uh, let's see. I have at least one more thing, and then we can turn to you. My other last thing, I like the events. We have this little event deck, oh. this progression, the progression of and what's going on. Every scenario is going to have a whole new sequence of event decks with, sometimes, the reason they're sleeved, multiple cards that can yes. trigger multiple choose-your-own-adventure mini-moments. Sometimes you have a choice to make, sometimes it's going to be based on stats you have, but you may have an event that resolves in multiple different ways depending on different factors, either choice or situational, and those events add a little story twist. Yeah. Like, I... I'm still intrigued at the fact that we have these paintings on the wall, these yeah. the, the paintings of the lady that won't come down no matter how much you tear them down, and they're going to cut keep and it resurfacing. Gave you, it gave you an ability called... Where's, where's it gave your, me a card. It gave me a card. It gave you a card that Naughty was... Naughty Secrets? No, Naughty Secrets was a different card. No. Either way. Like, no, Fragile Mortality, I think, is what it gave you. Something like that. 
It, it gave you a card that allowed you to like die and re yeah. rebirth. Uh, death, death, death then and rebirth. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Lots, lots of fun. Speaking of which, you reminded me. Lots of the slow introduction of cards to the game. I generally like that in most systems. I like it in Mechs vs. Minions. I like it in any Legacy game I play. I like it in any game that has the slow introduction of here's the game and now just here's more shoveled in every time you yep. play it. I like that because it allows a game to not overwhelm you while also making sure that every subsequent play, like you're motivated to come back to the table. You're like, well, yep. well no, no, I, I want to I see more. I already saw that stuff last time. I want to see more. I like legacy games in general for a reason. This is legacy light, uh, but it's going to have that aspect of things being added to the game as you go. So your turn. I'm, I'm going to agree with the vast majority of what you've said. I've got some criticisms related well, to what you've said that we'll get to. But one thing I have to point out, and, and don't worry, I'm not going to object you all to the flavor text here on Board Game Co.'s channel. But really, genuinely, the writing in this game, the writing's from, not bad. from the character development, from the you know the, the character profile on the back of your board, to the writing in all these little mini cards, to the writing in the scenario, there are little moments throughout the entire course of your gameplay experience that are peppered with just enough story. Yeah. You have a longer paragraph when you open up the adventure, sets the stage for everything, and then moment to moment, you're going to have a sentence or two here and there. You're going to have cards that are thematically driven, with a little bit of flavor giving you insight into what they are. You're going to see card cycle back in that you got back in past campaigns like whenever you pull that card back out of this deck you'll remember yeah. the painted ladies that you tried to roll up that just kept summoning I'm so forward trying to forget the painted ladies and every single sequence of those four rounds is going to have a chapter heading that adds Unlocks. more progression moves the story along I, I cannot speak highly enough of the amount of fun and creativity and theme they've given this this does not feel if this was if i was going to compare this adventure to anything and it might just be because thaddeus toad is here it feels like a Wind in the Willows, like, romp with exploration and weird twists and creatures that. that, like, your girl can summon, like, magical spiritual bulls. She just summons fiery elemental bulls. That's all she does. <laughs> and the but, very, like, she, she and the very last, that. the very last part of her board says, fiery bulls, that's the future. Like, it's bizarre. The, the flavor text is is really well so done. Good. It's very bizarre. It's very rural, rural building. It does a decent job from all the aspects of it. I, I didn't overly comment on it because that's not my thing no, no, normally. No, no, but I am, a, it's good. I am a flavor text. It's good. And I can certify I want to play this game partially and in some ways first and foremost because of how good the story already is. Yeah. It has me invested. It has me compelled. Outside of that, the gameplay is going to be fun. Rolling a lot of dice is always fun. Spells, yep. powers, abilities, all of that is a blast to play with. The only other thing that I'd, I'd highlight outside of what you've already talked sure. about is going to be the fact that they're playing with the Labyrinth in a unique way. In Things like bombs. The Bomberman oh. style, uh, when they're placed down, starts a chain effect that blows out to the sides and ripples and doubles up on each other and creates more damage. How much damage did I take in our scenario again? You I think it was two. Like, I think yeah. it's true. I think that was a sacrifice I paid to power and a spell. Got a total... You took. Um... We won't talk about it. We won't okay, talk cool. About yeah, it. Got yeah. Just making sure. There's there's so much they can do with this space, with the creatures that they're bringing out, with the minions that you get to work with yourself, with the abilities that like... get unlocked, that get added to your deck. Things, I, can see I mean, that. things like things like the dojo here that allows you to pop in. It, it's the yep. same concept again that that original game had in some ways, and they just continue highlighting it. That's that's going to be. I mean. At this moment, I'm I'm really enjoying the game. Yeah, that's gonna be the, the stuff we liked. Which means this review is now oh, not over. It's not over yet. Stuff we didn't like. Stuff we didn't like. So for myself, there's going to be a few things. Again, mostly comparing to the original Val and Villainy. Now yep. to begin with, this isn't. This is a weird, the first one's gonna be a tricky one because it's not so much things that I don't like, but rather. I do miss the control of the villain that the original Valen Villainy had. I like the aspect that you have one player who controls the villain, I guess, to feel powerful while controlling all the minions, as opposed to the cooperative aspect of following more of a procedural step. It's a sacrifice I would say I'm willing to make for the general trade-off of the game, but it certainly it is missing a little bit of that spark of that one versus many feeling. Now again, I am not, and maybe I should have checked beforehand, sure. but I didn't know it was going to be coming up. I am not sure if the opportunity for a one versus many style of game is will in be in here. So I think it would be worth checking the Kickstarter page or following up with Skybound and James 
or them Co commenting on the bottom of this video sure. to link. That's something, while I agree is with the criticism... Is co-op an addition or a replacement? That's something that I'm just yeah. not 100% sure on. Yeah. And to be clear, I wouldn't even use the word criticism. It's more an aspect of, I like the one of his many, I like the things being to the table, the lack of it doesn't necessarily... I can't even say I'm willing to go back one way or the other. Maybe that. Maybe the one of his many adds time to the game that I don't want to be there. I think it does because there's not yeah. a way to drive endgame with those four rounds. There's yeah. not a loss condition other than your opponent defeating you. Basically. So, so, so again, it's not... It's not something that I'm willing to say I want one versus the other, but I do miss that that feel to a degree. Oh, one more thing I like, by the way, this is a new thing. I like the fact, speaking of the fiery bulls, that I could summon and control yeah, fiery allies. bulls. Allies. Yeah. The original game didn't have allies. You only had enemies. Enemies, enemies, and enemies. Yeah, so, yeah. that's neat. But back to things I didn't like. So yeah, so the lack of the, the, the AI character is going to be one. Uh, the second one's going to be far more important, and I think in general I would say most of the changes I've seen here I do like. Okay. I will say that the co-op aspect and the legacy aspect adds extra degrees uh, degrees of steps that need to be followed, the processes you need to be on top of, things you need to be aware of, that were, the original game had a decent amount as it was, mm -hmm. and we're adding an extra little chunk of it. Pulling Not cards, ton, checking boxes, setting yeah. up your quest deck, making Pausing sure things the game, aren't mixed together. This. Yeah, sure. There's extra things you're going through as you play the game that, while, again, I like the overall package, they are certainly, like, here's the thing. This is the way I would actually put it to a degree. I think that the original Val and Villainy to a degree is a more accessible jumping in point, I think. It's a little hard to that for sure because you do have to manage the control of the villain, which means one person has to know a slightly different game. I think this added more steps to the game, more things to be aware of, and it's not bad for me as someone who was coming in already knowing the system. Okay. I wonder what that would be like for people who hadn't played the original. I'll, I'll say this, because I, I kind of jumped you into a, a scenario one, skipping the tutorial scenario. Oh. They do have a full tutorial scenario that is just teaching the game. Either Interesting. you play it by yourself, or you play it with a whole group of people, and with the understanding that this is supposed to be bland and scripted, yeah. so that you learn all the mechanics up to a point. And that took That's about 30 minutes to learn, right? That's interesting. And so I, I agree with you in terms of accessibility, general, get it to the table and just go. But I also think, depending on the organization system of the game, I think at a certain point this becomes more accessible and more manageable because of the cooperative nature of it yeah. and because of how simple and clean uh, every new game will be primarily introducing a few different rules. You'll be adding a few different cards and you'll be doing a new boss or a new a new bad guy that you're facing yeah, down I like, with. I like that. I like and that. so I think after the first few games, this becomes more accessible. I think the initial game, it, it might take a little bit longer to get up and running. Could be, could yeah. be. Yeah, again, it's hard to judge it perfectly because I'm coming in knowing the system yep. to a degree. I, I'm just curious about how this uh, how this presents for a new player, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, that's basically everything I have in the what I don't like section. Interesting. Yeah. That's not. It's not a lot. I, it's not a lot. I mean, I'm trying. Maybe I'm missing something, but I, I just the rest of the changes. I would say that the rest of the changes are just positive changes on a system I really like. I've got. I've got a few things. Uh, I've got a few things. I while I agree that I like the labyrinth. I am also a bit annoyed by the Labyrinth. Interesting. And I'm a bit annoyed by the way cards in the original game and in this game, cards get spread out. I love the Labyrinth. For I mean, two let's... reasons. For two reasons. Uh, one of the things, we messed up a tile placement. It the didn't, way... didn't affect the game. It didn't affect our enjoyment. I know. The way you have to spawn and try to be very specific with how you position and the way that you start cycling through these double-sided tiles, yeah. I wish these were a little bit more hidden so that I couldn't predict what's coming out. Uh, and or I imagine that's something they can fix with a cover the same yep. way they do for the minions uh, And it could just be that I could be a prototype missed it something like that uh, and or I I would like to I, I I Don't I don't like the way you have to very specifically Pace things out. I um, find it confusing at times like checking to see if this which is adjacent to here and here Can fit appropriately so I, I'll give you the tiniest bit again opinions opinions But I'll give you the tiniest bit of credence to the fact that checking the that a tile fits across the edges when you with mirror yeah. around That can be a drop confusing. That's how we messed up. Yep, but but first of all messing up I don't think impacts your enjoyment and secondly I just like the system. I was okay, okay with it. That's fair. We know again we teach our different opinions. That's totally fine. The but. other thing is going to be a bit of finickiness when it comes to like minion stacks and treasure stacks and the way that things gets ordered on the board. That's fair. That's a fair point. It's a very. Yeah. I, I wasn't thinking that because it's the same I, as the base game. I even in the base game yeah. 
was always and have always been a little bit bothered by, and I think it's the best way you can do it. I don't have a better system. I'm not saying that past having two but, miniatures for every single card. But you're gonna have you're gonna have stacks of three or four cards deep sometimes with treasures and scenarios and minions and understanding how they order, maneuvering and moving them around and just picking up those cards and shifting things. There's a lot of little yep. things to manage, and the odds of missing some of those throughout the course of the gameplay, I think, is almost guaranteed. If that bothers you, or you're yeah. really trying to be particular, then you might get annoyed more often. That's very fair. Um, I, I had that in my original review of the original Violent Villainy, that, that discrepancy between playing with miniatures and then having this card stacking yeah. system. I completely definitely, I, I completely agree that's a criticism of the system. I also agree, don't have any better suggestions, Yep. but that's going to be true in this game as well. Yeah, yep. that's fair. Uh, that, that remains constant. Other than that, I've got things I'd like to see. Yeah, I like one of the things that I do with prototypes and Kickstarters is things is 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 things that I'd like to see in the Kickstarter page, like things I'm going to be looking for. Quackalopes, uh, well, specifically Quackalopes and a Quackalope miniature potentially. Yep. I mean, oh, they're better. They, be a they gently miniature. mentioned that it's possible. Oh, possible. I, I mean, we'll see. Uh, that being said, one thing that I'd really like to see is while I like this labyrinth. I'd like some sort of scenario, expansion, additional campaign, more content that gives me a whole new set of tiles so, or different regions that, that allow me to explore other things than just this labyrinth all the time. Uh, uh, interesting. So you're talking about a little... So my idea is adjacent, but not okay. the same. I, I like the idea that the way we have cards being added to the deck as we progress, you want I tiles definitely added? want tiles added to the deck. Although... Having a different map could be the same. Uh, it's the same goal. thing in the original one. I one of the things I mentioned in my original review of the original prototype yeah. was I wanted more tiles. I wanted more fun locations, abilities, things to do, and they added those. I'm gonna be skimming over their page for all their like daily unlocks and updates and whatever. There's gotta be at least things. one set of portal tiles where you can just like pop from one to another just yeah. on the board. And so and so I'm expecting all of that. It's just something I'm gonna be over on the Kickstarter page looking for. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, other things that I'll be looking for. I would enjoy if our minions had minis were miniatures mm -hmm. or standees. Anything that's miniatures, I'm I'd be with. fine with either. I don't think I need any of the villains or anything to have miniatures, but I would enjoy if, like, when you summoned a fiery bull, I would enjoy if that was actually a physical miniature because then you're not blocking the entire card. Yep. You're only blocking because right now the problem is you place your your other ones on the other and then half we have of the, the tile. Their card, our minions in one card, and especially in this game where that seeing the card it, actually, it matters. That's actually a point I mentioned yeah. in terms of things we don't like. The fact in the original game covering a card didn't really matter because you could just see artwork. everything. But now if you cover a card, you have the problem instead where it's like, oh great, great. Does this tile connect there or not? Yeah, and you have it to can scoot be a little over. harder. And if you have both things there you now can't see the tile at all. Yeah. I fair. would like if these had some sort of, again, it doesn't have to be base game, but a box or something that gave me standees or gave me miniatures for each one of my allies. Yeah. Uh, outside of that... Last category. What can we see others not liking? What can we see others not liking? Uh, this game is dice rolling galore. Yes. Uh, it, it's about one of the funnest systems I've came across that allows you to get upgrades and abilities and roll a insane amount of dice and feel super powerful when you do so, but if you yep. don't like rolling dice and getting bad and good rolls sometimes, not for you. Yeah, 100%. This is something I mentioned in the original. This is definitely a very heavily... Luck is not the right word. It's, it's a chaos... Some dice rolling, some just powers and abilities. Yeah. I think it's going to be an improvement over the original in the sense that the original had the swing of the cards I get as okay. the heroes and the, the cards you get as, you know, Mordak. Uh, in this case, because of the co-op nature, it's a little bit more constrained. It's not going to have as much of that wild swing. But now I still have fun, cool spells. I'm still rolling dice. One yep. turn, I'll roll no magic at all and basically have a flop <laughs> of a turn. Sure. And other turns, I'll be able to get a ton of stuff and, and actually accomplish my goals. So there's going to have that RNG uh, that, that's definitely going to be present in the game. Same idea with cards you draw, minions you draw, you can wander out your first few tiles and explore and suddenly encounter a few minions before you're prepared to deal with them, or you can have a whole bunch of safe, easy to deal with tiles yep. and then deal with them later. So it's going to have that aspect. If this doesn't sound like a fun system, if you want something a lot more uh, strategic Precise. in its play, uh, more Euro, if you want if you want a game like Blood Rage, which much less luck in Blood Rage, but this is not going to be that style of game. This is or fun, even, I mean, even, even a dungeon crawl that is a little bit more controlled, like... There's two yeah. levels of dungeon crawl for me. There's the dungeon crawl where you can like be precise and strategic and maneuver Gloomhaven. through. And then there's something like this where yeah. you're literally just romping and bombs are exploding and walls are falling and you're breaking through and you're just showing up on the back of a snail with a frog sitting there who stole his identity from someone else. Like, if that sounds good to you, this is the game. If it doesn't, if you want something more precise, Gloomhaven would be a great recommendation, like a great yes. dungeon crawl-esque comparison. Uh, if you're not looking for a deeply thematic game. Yeah, I agree. 
you know, this can be... which I've already highlighted and I love deeply thematic games, but this isn't a simple abstract. You should, the best way to experience this is by remembering the cards, by reading the names, by looking at the artwork, by flipping this board over. And I know it's a lot of flavor text. The best it's... way to experience this is reading that section. It's actually worth reading. I'm not so, a big flavor person. You're not a big flavor text person. Which brings us to uh, final thoughts, and I'm not going to rate this one because okay. I have one play, yeah. and I, I I won't rate it, but I will say things. So you're welcome to rate it if you want. Sure. That's your choice, your bourbon scale or whatever scale you want to use. Uh, for myself, here's what I'll say about this game. I'm not willing to rate a game that I've only played once, not yet. Uh, yep. Five point scales aside, all that, even though I played the original, not not rating it yet. You give the original a four out of five. I give the original a four to five, and that's important for the next thing I say. If you ask me right now which game to keep and I can only keep one, I would absolutely keep Ludwig's Labyrinth over the original without even pausing for a second. I liked the original Valor and Villainy. I thought it was a fun game. I still think it's a fun game. It's sure. a game that I enjoy playing. I want to pull out again. I want to have that head-to-head in-your-face fighting and, and go through the exploration and the, the, the tiles and figuring out what I need to do and all that stuff. And this is going to give me most of that experience mm -hmm. with some variety in bosses, mm -hmm. with a labyrinth I enjoy, with mm -hmm. more cars that I enjoy, I and in a shorter, more accessible playtime. Sure. It's not a contest for me. It's yeah. not even remotely close. Yeah. I'm not rating this one, and more plays may change that. But if I had to make a decision right now, I would be keeping this one and getting rid of the original without without a pause or hesitation. Yeah, I so I don't think I can fairly rate this one either yep. um, for a variety of reasons. One, it's a campaign game and there's a lot of there's a lot more than I need to play. So, Two, it has a quackle open it. Just unfair already. There's nothing I can say about it. Uh, but, but I mean, if they want to put something on the Kickstarter page, if like James Hudson wants to quote me on this, you can stick five out of five from Quackalope on oh, it. Oh, like if you're, you you're, want a testimonial. You're, you're allowed to. You're no. allowed to. If you want a testimonial, Board Game Co., get rid of Minions of Mordak. <laughs> That's a great testimonial. Because genuinely, it's going to line up with exactly what you said with the addition that the story here is so much fun and so good to play through. And the fact that it's going to be, a, at least base game, is going to be a little bit of a tighter campaign. This is a campaign game yeah. that I feel like I could actually finish. Yeah, if you want an actual testimonial, <laughs> Board Game Co., uh, what is it? Lud Ludwig's Lab Labyrinth improves on Valor and uh, improves on Minions and Mordak in nearly every way possible, and does so in half the playtime. 